get an answer within seconds. We, there are some people who believe that we have already reached uh, what some call, describe as the technological singularity. And the singularity uh, in, in that term, uh, the way it's used in that term, uh, means the, the day on which we are so enhanced by electronic uh, technology or perhaps elect, uh, enhanced genetically uh, or, or through nanotechnology that our capabilities transcend the biological limits of our, our DNA. Um, there are some who believe we've already achieved, and, and b- b- by the way, and beyond that point, uh, just like um, the singularity around a black hole, which is where the term is uh, is taken from, uh, once you pass the limit of the singularity, uh, you can never go back. Um, in, in the case of a black hole, you pass through the singularity and you're stuck. You are, you are getting sucked into the black hole. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, similarly, once we pass the technological singularity, Uh, It is believed that uh, human society can never go back, that uh, the enhanced uh, human 2.0 or H plus, as uh, the the transhumanist movement calls it, uh, once we achieve that status, society will change, humanity will change irrevocably. We can never go back to the way it was before. Uh, But there are some people who believe we've already achieved that because... So many of us now carry a uh, an iPod or an iPhone, and the iPod even is uh, or, or uh, similar tablets are, are nothing more than just uh, miniature computers anymore. It's not just a music player, right? Um, yeah, I mean, my iPod has got my calendar in it. It's got all my contacts in it. Uh, I can read books on it. Got the Bible on it. Uh, Bible commentaries on it. I can I can Skype on it. You know, I can uh, take movies on it and and you know record uh, audio. It it basically is a small ha- palm sized computer. Um, and because of this, I need never be late for an appointment ever again. I need, you know, I need never get lost ever again. As long as it can connect to a, a Wi-Fi signal, uh, I know exactly where I am, thanks to the GPS grid. Um, yeah, I, I'm thinking about putting a GPS on my saddle when I'm out riding my horse. Yeah, know? there you go. Uh, so, you know, we, this, this really is new to this generation. Uh, we need never be lost, never be late. Uh, never be uninformed ever again because we are all connected. And, of course, the flip side of that, uh, once you get into the uh, the command and control aspect, is that somebody... They, they know exactly where you are within a foot of where you're standing, yeah. At any given moment, right. And what you've been reading and who you've been communicating with and all of your friends and so forth. Um, so it doesn't take a lot to imagine how a future one-world government will, will be able to use that. Um, I, I think, um, you know, being around the prophecy movement and and i i do know a number of, of people that are um gifted in, in you know in, in the office of a prophet uh, and it's interesting to me to see several of them it, it said something similar to, to me about just because we see something demonic and dark happening doesn't doesn't mean we're not supposed to stand against it and pray against it from happening uh, kind of reminding me of right. um, jonah you know um, he finally goes to Nineveh and gives that message. Of course, he must have looked very frightening after being in a well for three days. I don't know what yeah. he looked like, but I'm guessing he kind of looked, you know, blue. Maybe his skin had <laughs> turned a bit blue and kind of gross looking, you know. And sure. he's, he's, he's issuing this warning. If you guys don't repent, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, they turned around and repented. But I do recall when we were down at um, one of the um, prophecy meetings that um, one of the former Illuminatiist um, it talked about that the Illuminati teach that Jesus is chained up in hell at the moment and that at Armageddon they're going to kill God and you know put Lucifer on the throne. That's what they actually believe. Um, so, you know, the question I think on a lot of people's minds, you know, which has been going on for a very long time is when will Jesus return? Mm-hmm. And he's, he's obviously said, when you see these signs, yeah. keep looking up, you know. So we're, we're obviously at that place. Um, and then in the world, the, the, we're heading, you know, we can see this thing's heading towards this Armageddon thing. Um, and in the word that God tells us, you know, that nations are, you know, um, gathering against each other in Jerusalem, the valley of Medjugorje. Um, and um, I, again, you know, we, we see this theme being played out in the scriptures, which is the only reliable information we really have. Right, right. So um, I, I'm reminded of Amos 3.7, you know, she says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal the secrets unto his servants of prophets. So I do think we need to pay attention to what's, you know, 
being offered um, the information we're receiving at this time. Um, it, it's, you know, I, I think this is really a time when the believers need to come together and fervently pray for revival. Absolutely. Uh, there are those who, um, both within and without the church, uh, who look at those who are looking up for Christ's imminent return as people who are of no practical use in the here and now because we're uh, going to be out of here anyway, so what does it really matter if we uh, uh, destroy the earth you know, mm-hmm. uh, or take care of the environment or, or do anything productive to help those in need because God's going to call us out of here any day anyway, so why should we bother working? We'll just sit here on the front porch with a glass of tea and wait for the, you know, the clouds to roll back like a scroll. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think true Christian believers who are, are genuinely uh, you know, on fire for, for, for the Lord and, and love the Lord will look at what he commanded of us and, and take to heart his, his words, even, even for those in the, uh, the, the judgment of the sheep and the judgment of the nations where he separates the sheep from the goats. And, and I believe those will be the people who are, are left on earth after the rapture, mm-hmm. uh, those who were not believers and, and uh, we'll judge them and say, um, you know, well done, uh, you know, as you've done to the least of these, those who were hungry and those who were in prison and those who, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and I think we can look to that as well as, as, you know, a clue as to what Jesus wants us to do for, for those around us right now, in the here and now. Um, minister to their physical needs, because it's a little difficult for them to hear when, you know, the, the gospel message, when they're starving or they're hurt or they're angry or they're, uh, you know, in, in a uh, an abusive relationship or, or what, whatever, um, you know, we, we are called to do those things as well. And then to share the gospel as well. Um, and I think those who are feeling that the time of Christ's return is near are even more motivated to go out and share the gospel because we know that there aren't that many more days, months, weeks, years, whatever it is, but there aren't the, the number of them is decreasing every single day and the time grows short and there are people that we care about deeply around us who are not yet saved. Sitting on fences as well, yeah. Right, and, and so, you know, the, the, this, this straw man argument of those who are looking for Christ's imminent return, just sitting back and letting the world go to hell, I think is a, a cruel mischaracterization and a misunderstanding. And I can understand skeptics and, and non-believers characterizing us this way, but, but sadly, they're... they're one of the quickest ways to get people to fight, you know, who call themselves Christian, is to just throw out the question, okay, are you pre, mid, or post? Mm. Uh, and you start arguing over when Christ is going to return. And sometimes the uh, the need to win the argument overwhelms the biblical command from the Apostle Peter to share the hope we have in Christ Jesus with gentleness and respect. You know, I don't... Not, it, it tells us we're supposed to comfort each other with these words. Yes. I mean, you know, First Thessalonians. I mean, the main message is that we're to receive and to give comfort because of the love of Christ in us. Yes, um, we stay in hope, and um, just as you're saying, I mean, I, we just go around and just blessing people. You know, when you right. bless somebody, they they remember that for the rest of their life. Yeah, yeah, uh, and those who are, as you say, on the fence or skeptics, looking in and seeing professing Christians bashing each other. Uh, over differences in a doctrine that is not central to salvation. I mean, you know, understanding prophecy is important. We're told in the book of Revelation that we get a a blessing from reading the book or from hearing the words. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we should study it. But there are things about it that are, are, I I think, deliberately vague. Um, And I think God did that on purpose so that the enemy wouldn't be able to fabricate a really, really convincing lie. Um, You know, maybe a little humility is in order here. I mean, this is a eschatology, prophecy, an understanding of the timing of Christ's return is something that uh, scholars have been researching, studying, praying about, um, and debating for 2,000 years. And some of the people who've been involved in these debates are really, really smart. Now, Casper, you know, big fish, small pond. I was generally the smartest kid in my my class when I was in elementary school. And I, so I kind of grew up with that idea that in any room that I was in among my peers, I was probably the smartest guy there. Um, it, it's been kind of a harsh reality 
<laughs> getting out in the real world and finding out there are a lot of people who grew up just like that. And I'm just, you know, in the big world, I'm not such a big fish anymore. So I've had to learn over the last 40 years, 35 years to just kind of tone it down a little bit. And you know, with the uh, intellectual arrogance and, and egotism, um, I, yeah, you know, well, I, I'm, I, I'm, I agree. I think I figured out what VIP actually means. It means very important peanut. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know in the grand scheme that's that's about right the, the lord doesn't need me to fight his battles uh with my words with my sword or anything else um the fact that he chooses to use my you know the humble efforts that we produce here in, in our you know so-called bunker um mm. is really humbling when you think about it and you go through and, and look at the giants throughout history that the lord has used in a mighty way and just think you know okay if i've reached even one person or you know over the last 10 years According to what we read in Scripture, you know, about the, um, the prodigal son coming home or finding the lamb that was lost and the way uh, the, the angels in heaven rejoice over such a, a development, okay, well, that makes all the effort worthwhile. Um, how much are they going to rejoice if I can thrash somebody, a fellow believer, in a debate over a point that is not central to doctrine uh, and, and get nasty while I'm doing I, I, yeah, it. Shouldn't, it shouldn't be going off. And I'm not trying to impugn anyone's character or bash anybody. Um, it's just something that's kind of been on my heart lately. Uh, I've been trying to study prophecy more because I feel like I don't understand it well enough. Um, and again, you know, this is maybe the old intellectual pride coming out again. Uh, I don't like to feel as though I don't know everything that there is to know about a topic that's important or that I'm interested in. And certainly prophecy is is both of those. Um, and I've been trying to fit it in around, you know, work and other things around home. Uh, and, you know, Sharon has you cut her teeth on prophecy at, at a church that taught it every Sunday, you know, uh, and uh, she, she's been studying prophecy for, for 50 years. Uh, I come late to the party. I read late great planet earth when I was in, you know, my prepubescent years scared the Dickens mm. out of me. Um, but it, but it kind of stuck with me and I've always kind of had an interest in it. And now I'm just beginning to understand the concepts and some of the differences between the various positions, pre-millennial, post-millennial, pre-trib, pre-wrath, uh, mid-trib, post, you know, and I, okay, I, I'm starting to get my mind around those things. But uh, again, we, we've not settled on one final definition after 2000 years. I don't think we're going to do it before think, Jesus comes you know, back. Yeah. I, you know, it's like we read second Thessalonians two, three, let no man deceive you by any means. You know, the Apostle Paul's telling us that the day shall not come except there come a falling away first, uh, the, the, uh, the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Paul's telling yeah. us basically the timing of the rapture, I think, here, um, because on, say, um, it was somewhere in there, he, he said, you know, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus, by the gathering together of him, you know, don't be shaken in your mind, or troubled in your spirit, by word, or letter, you know, the I think he's telling us here not to be deceived by the day of the Lord, which means the tribulation. I don't think that means the rapture. Um, and, and we are seeing an amazing falling away right now. At the same time, I, I believe there's a great harvest happening in the midst of that. Um, and, and, you know, just, just like the, um, the studies are showing that more people are believing in an extraterrestrial Savior right now than in the God of the Bible. Right, right. I mean, we've got the lying signs and wonders happening. We've got UFO manifestations happening all over the place. And now with all the technology, you know, people are actually videotaping and photographing these things. Um, so it's pretty hard to ignore it. And yet the church, for the most part, doesn't want to deal with it. Right. Yeah, and the church, you're right. The church is not teaching prophecy, studying prophecy. And, you know, and even just to go back to that reference of Second Thessalonians 2.3 uh, about uh, the great falling away and the man of sin being revealed, at, you know, after the great falling away. Um, there, there are those who, you know, pre-tribulation teachers who uh, believe that the word apostasia uh, does not mean apostasy, as we understand it, but it, it, that actually refers to the rapture itself. There are pre-tribulation teachers who disagree with that and believe it does mean apostasy, but mean, but they, they still believe that uh, we, we will be out of here before the Antichrist really takes the stage. And then, of course, there are others who don't accept the pre-tribulation view who say, well, no, see, that shows us that we're going to see the Antichrist before we are out of here. And, and so, uh, you know, again, this is a question that's been argued for 2,000 years by people a lot more intelligent than, than, than the two of us, uh, and, and yet... Uh, 
Uh, you know, like I said, it, there, there's no faster way to to get a group of Christians arguing than to just throw that question out there. Just do it and then, you know, duck for cover. Um, it, it is an interesting question. It comes up a lot. You know, I've had people ask people, why, you know, why are you 